change a river to drain. Or a water body into a drain. Uh, yeah. You just have to let it f allow, uh, follow its all course. All over the world. You see, you, if you look at the maps in the 50s for this order, and then there were boats. If you go to AMA, or you see that there were boats, canoes, canoes yeah. on those drawings. And even you go to Kumasi, you see the same. But unfortunately, the greed of the, some, some chiefs and some public officials allow these things to happen. And it becomes a huge cost to the country. Huge cost. We, we have never been able to solve this or that problem. And we cannot solve it. Because, you see, people upstream are throwing their waste. So it will come downstream. And once it comes downstream, it will get choked and it will smell. And you see, it comes with a lot of cost. We get upper respiratory diseases from the smell, cough, malaria, catar, you know, and the children get diarrhea. Two million people die from diarrhea. The highest, the, disease, the most serious disease now it's not malaria. The number one killer of children is not malaria. It's the upper it's, re it's, respiratory tract disease. It's now, it's now diarrhea because 445 million school days are lost for children. And once they get diarrhea, they don't go to school. It affects their education. It affects the, it affects the poor people too much. Then, if you leave, move from there, then also the stagnant water breeds mosquitoes. When they breed mosquitoes, they buy that, they, and then we get malaria. When you are sick of malaria, it affects productivity. So it's a whole cycle. You can't go to work. Mm. You can't do your business. The children cannot go to school. They will fail their exams, and they will be repeated. So it's a very serious. Then we come to the more serious one. Then you come to cholera. Very dangerous. And sometimes I ask myself, why should we allow ourselves to be punished this way? We know that if we don't keep our environment clean, and the only way that people can get cholera is when a, a, a human uh, waste is put in, a, a in the water. water and then it enters into somebody's uh, system. So how did it happen? How can it happen? And we know in the ritual, it's happening every year. Every year, people are dying. So, you see, sometimes, I don't know how to put it, it's said that it's only uh, somebody who, I don't know, I don't want for luck, it's only somebody who is a fool, who d does the same thing as to expect a different result. <laughs> but we are not fools. Mm. We are very wise people. And we need in to be case, thinking beyond what we, the In our case, we are very wise. Mm. But we do the same thing and expect different results. We want to throw human waste. And when you throw human waste, and when it rains, you see, we don't also harvest the rainwater, which I've been advocating. Mm. We allow the runoff to hit the ground, and it's, it takes everything on its way. Human waste here, um, um, animal waste, every waste is carrying. Mm. Uh, talking about that, how do we need to make sure that um, we match the issue of health, sanitation, um, in, in a way that will ensure sustainability of the water bodies? And the in the environment we have? You know, uh, we always call it water and sanitation. Mm. Without water, you can't have proper sanitation. And when we talk about proper sanitation, that is access to good water, drinking water, water for all, whatever you need. And we have the quality, the quantity, and then availability and delivery. You know, that is the issue. But if you don't marry them together, and then you don't look at the source, mm. we should first know that every water you are drinking from the tap is coming from the source we should manage the source and unfortunately i think ghana we think that <laughs> water is not coming from a river or a stream or something they, they don't know it i think people think water comes from just a dam side but they run off the small small streams that come together flow into the dam and that is where we get the source of. so if you 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 you, you put any waste in any water, it will end up in a dam. It will end up in, in a, a water big river, body. and it will enter a water body. And that is where the problem is. In Koforidia, about uh, five, six years ago, they treated three million gallons of water and threw it away because it was unwholesome. So if we, we don't know this thing, sometimes we have to tell people that anything you are throwing on the ground, know that it's going back to come and affect you or somebody. Don't, we should stop it. One, the next thing is that why should we throw human waste 
into drains. As Ghanaians, I mean, sometimes we don't have to wait for government or anybody to come and beat you or arrest you before you know that what you are doing some for, for lack of words is crazy. Because you, you drink water, you are throwing human waste. That water, some of them will sink into the ground. It will recharge the underground. The waste is going into the ground. And then that somebody is sinking a borehole, he may drink the water. It can affect him. So if you, if, you, if you don't think about the well-being of people mm. and you only think about yourself, you are selfish, before you realize you are, that thing will affect you yourself. Because, because it's an environment. In yeah, which, we all it, live it, in an environment. Yes, we all live in the community. Now, when it comes to making sure that there is equitable distribution of um, resources in such a way that we have the maintenance of water bodies, would you say that um, you critics and also the NGOs have been very much satisfied with the way perhaps uh, central government or even the district assembly need to invest in the sustainability of water bodies so that they don't result in the health um, implications that we're seeing currently. Thank you very much. I think we are not satisfied with the protection of the water source, you know, and that is why we have so many challenges. People are doing illegal mining in the water body itself, uh, around it. People are winning sand there. People are farming in the dry season. And if you don't protect your source, <laughs> I don't know how anybody who wants to do business or manufacture water as a finished product must look at the raw material. And the raw material is the source of the, 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 the water body. If you don't protect it, it means you are, your, you, your business is unsustainable. The reason why we cannot provide water, look, how many people are holding the yellow uh, jerrycan uh, this time? Have you seen some? In, no. in rainy season, no. you don't see it. Mm. The question is why? Because it's rainy and because the dams are full and they pump so much water. Mm. Sometimes they will tell us, give us excuses. Why is it that when it's raining, the, their, their machines don't get fault? It's because they have so much water that even the pressure itself can, can help to, to pump the water. But when the, when the water is getting low, then they have to pump at a time and leave some. So we are destroying our future. Ghana, unfortunately, we don't have much water. Mm. Even the, what everybody is sinking a borehole. That is the west side of it. And I don't know why we should do that. As a country, we even don't know the aquifers, what the water we have in, on, the, on the ground. And everybody is sinking one. Why should we allow it? Because people don't get water. But it's easier to sink one borehole and supply a community so that you don't break the soil. And I always say we have the experience of the Venice experience where a city of Venice sank because of uh, what do we call a city of Venice sank because mm. of boreholes. People sank so many boreholes that the city sank. What we are doing, we are breaking the soil at every point, and it's not good for the environment. So some of the things we are doing in because we need water, because we want to get water, it, it is not going to, it's unsustainable. But doesn't it come down then to um, education and law enforcement of the citizenry? You see, it is education and law enforcement. That one goes hand in hand. You educate, you enforce. But here, we, we don't, the education, I don't know where I don't see m people educating the people sinking boreholes. And I don't see the involvement of the assemblies. You know, this thing should be done by the assemblies. Because water management, if you look at the water resource policy, it's it, the, the involvement, the partners, number one is look, the assemblies. Assemblies should make bylaws. But they, uh, most of the assemblies are number one offenders when it comes to the abuse of water bodies. Mm. Every city you go, even a, a city that, a young city or maybe more than one or not the one up and coming cities, when you go there, what do you see? You see that even the stream there, they are allowing people to destroy the river. As if we are not learning from experience. We should learn from our experience. Maybe we, I always say that we should learn from Odo, we should learn from Aveno, and then go and learn from Subin in Kumasi. So then young or new you know, uh, mm. uh, cities that are coming up don't repeat the same mistake. Mm. If you go to countries like, even in Africa, you go to countries that have a, a lot of water bodies and scenery, 
um, you go to even Cairo, etc. They use the water body sustainably, and it doesn't. With all the problems that they're having with the conflict and uh, political tensions and upheavals, etc., uh, they don't have health implications as a result of any mismanagement of any water body because the the, the policies are in place and also that people seem to follow. What can we learn from those communities or in those countries um, that we can also even apply in our part of the world? Thank you very much. You see, um, even in the past, our grandfathers, you know, those people whom we think that they were uneducated, they used superstition to protect our water bodies and everybody obeyed. Now we have the power given to the assemblies, given to the police, given to all of them, that you have the power now, protect us. But they are not doing their work, especially if you don't enforce it. There, look, I went to a place, a country, I met a Ghanaian. You told me something. He said, as for this place, be careful you don't commit any offense. The police are look, they will never talk to you. But if you commit an offense, they will arrest you. Here, it is law abiding country. That's what the Ghanaian told me. He didn't know me. He saw me because I was a Ghanaian. He, that's what in Stockholm. That's what he told me. I was standing by. He came to me and told me, hey, be careful. You see, why? They are enforcing the law. Those countries, they enforce their laws. Once the law, hmm, they deal with you. But here, when the law catches you, somebody will come and beg. We have Jatuahini. Who will go and then, please, please. No. The law doesn't accept please please they, we should enforce our laws like they are doing water tourism is the number one destination in tourism water tourism and people so much money countries which are making money are making money because of the water destination if you go to some countries like Stockholm those Scandinavian countries even are down here quite recently We've we realized that we have emergence of what tourism activities, Saint and all this. What what makes it different? It's because of the water. So Ghana, we are blessed, and some of, sometimes we don't need what others need to build our country. All we have to need, what we have to do, is to protect what we have, manage it, and use it properly, so that this country can move forward. If we don't do that, we will have problem. And water tourism. If we manage our water bodies very well, we are going to have, uh, unless I forget, even in the north now, it's not raining. Hmm? The rain is not like before. Look, look at the Akosombo dam. Look at the Akosombo, the water. If you look at the level, it's not, it's going down. Why? Why? And the runoff is going for waste. What are we doing with the runoff? In some countries, Every runoff is, is directed to a place, stay there as a lake, and then the, it takes its time to, 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 to clean itself, and it goes through the process and come back to join a river or a stream for, for its use. Here, the reason why we have floods, you know, is that every rain comes down and have to find its way. To, it, it does not how we manage water. Those countries, they manage water from the rooftop Every water should be managed. I mm. went to Adla uh, uh, no, Florida, and I saw a pond like this. They were managing it. I was shocked. Managing a pond, I asked the man, why? He said, no. If we don't manage this one, it will affect this one, it will affect this, it will affect this one. I was surprised. You know, so, and they also, they have canals, so that when the rain comes, they will come through the canal. Those who manage uh, policy, and you who... who who go to attend the conferences in those countries, et cetera, and are part of the NGO community. You see these things. Why is it that we're not able to transfer policy initiatives from those countries where they've been better off uh, into our part of um, the world, the, in, in country? The reason why they are not able to do it, that, that's why we are here talking about it. It's <laughs> just just advocating. Some, it's somebody's duty. You see, Ghanaians are not doing themselves any good. When somebody is paid the taxpayer's money, you pay tax, they pay somebody to deliver, he doesn't deliver, and we don't ask for accountability. The reason why that thing is not happening, we are not asking for accountability. We travel with them, we go there with them, but even to come here and talk to people and educate people, they don't want to come. Look at climate change, what it's doing to us as a country. 
We know there's a climate change. We know the problems with climate change. We know there should be mitigation. We know there should be adaptation. But we do nothing and, about it. And we do it. nothing about it. Currently, we, currently in Accra, we have um, over 150 cases of cholera. Uh, just at the La General Hospital alone, um, five people so far have been reported dead. Uh, a number of cases are still coming. Um, two months ago, the Ghana Health Service identified the areas and said, well, the rains were, on, were coming, uh, were setting in, and so people need to be a lot more careful than they should be. Uh, how do we make sure that in a bit to ensure the sanitation and sustainability of the environment, we take into cognizance what the role of the individuals in the community should be? You see, um, the role of the community, we should educate them. We should educate them. But primary health care is broken down in this country. As a result of that also. because yes. So it means we have a complementary yes. of the uh, primary factors that are failing. The people who are going to educate are not there. You know, and, and the people who are supposed to enforce it at that level, they are not there. So I always ask, when you go to the assemblies, they have a director for... Uh, this director for this, what, where, what do they do? Where, what, where do they go and educate the people? You should go to the community. They should divide themselves. They should come on the radio. They should pay money mm. and do some jingle to tell people. But you see, the reason why we are not doing nothing about those things is that people die, the people dying are from the communities, which are not the, 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 the middle class and the upper class. When, when those people die, sometimes, well, look, I had some the guy reporting and said only five people have died. How can you say only five people? <laughs> you know, <laughs> only five people have died. Hmm? How can you say only five people have died? You can't say that. Even one life is very important. Then you had the PRO on one of the radio say he mm -hmm. said only five people have died from the cholera. How can you say that? Even a life is m not only. So so you look at how people see it. Five lives lost. He said only. Only. So, so if you see it that way, you will not do it. And when he was talking about the neighborhood, I, I nearly wept, you know. And those people are at the disadvantage. We, we Ghanaians, we don't think about the poor. We should be thinking about those who are in need. Because those people, they are vulnerable. And what can we do to help the poor? You see, if you have mercy on the poor, God will have mercy on you. If you, if, if you, so if you help somebody who is in need, God will also help you. So we should come to a point that, as Ghanaians, we should also think about those who don't have, those who are poor. Hmm. But ha people also need to help themselves. Um, as they are being educated and sensitized, um, how important should they attach um, a lot more concern to some of those messages, messages they hear about precaution and making sure they seek early treatment for any symptoms they might get, whatever. Yeah, okay, uh, we, uh, we have to uh, now we have to advise them that because the cholera is here with us, they should be careful what they eat. You know where you are buying the food because it's very very important. When you don't, you should eat food which is warm, hot, not cold. And then also you don't just buy any food anywhere. You should wash your hands. Anytime, as, I mean, especially the young ones at the schools, they should provide water and soap for them to wash their hands. We should not be shaking hands by heart. Okay. Uh, we have Dr. Um, Dennis Porte with the Rich Hospital here in Accra. Very good morning to you, sir. Roland. Okay. Now, thanks for joining now because we know that you were on another program and, and also uh, trying to give us a lot more information on the subject. Yeah. Um, it's cholera. Uh, uh, how serious did the Ghana Health Service and its allied health institutions take it prior to the current outbreak that we have? Well, um, usually this comes as uh, uh, episodes or epidemics um, every now and then. And this time it's, it's come and it's come really has hit so hard. But I think within, uh, within us, we have are, are been able to manage it quite well, even though there's a lot of pressure on the, on the facilities. But I think so far we have done quite well in trying to um, rehydrate the people and get them back to, to fitness. Ideally, what should have been the case? Um, so far we're told that at least at the La General Hospital alone, five lives have been lost, even though they've had over 120 cases reported and daily they are inundated with cases. Ideally, what should have been um, the preventive measures undertaken? Well, the preventive measures start from the community. 
um, educating people about the fact that there's an epidemic. And uh, I think the man in your studio has said uh, quite a bit about washing of hands, shaking hands, and the eating hot food. If possible, if you can get your the water you are drinking, if you can even boil it and cool it before drinking. These are extreme things that one would have to do in, in these times of, of the outbreak. Um, but uh, what we as health workers will do is to quickly rehydrate a person who comes to the hospital because the amount of fluid a person loses is so, so, so much that the, the, <coughs> sorry, the body volume virtually collapses. The, the body goes into shock, hypovolumic shock. So ours is to quickly set lines and, and replace the fluid that the person is, is losing very, very vigorously. Mm -hmm. If that is achieved, life is not going to be lost. Again, if the person comes to the hospital quickly enough, where the rehydration hasn't gotten to the point where the person's kidneys and have shut down or the person's brain is, is going off, then the person can be saved. So it's also about early reporting to the health facility. And as much as um, the hospitals are under pressure, um, I won't say that anybody would be sent anywhere else without even starting something with in terms of per se. Because where I work, we have people being uh, referred to us, but they usually come with the IV lines or holding their, their fluid that have established somewhere, at least for them. So it's early reporting to the health facilities also help. Mm. Uh, I, I, we understand all that you're saying. That's uh, even when we've had the outbreak. And uh, Nanaj Mosapong, the executive director of Friends of Rivers and Water Bodies, who, who is a gentleman in the studio, has been talking about how we need to be more uh, proactive, um, looking at how we maintain um, as far as during the rainy season, water bodies and sanitation, etc. Um, how crucial are these at the community level? Uh, to make sure we have the preventive measures in place? Well, um, these are the main methods, the main things we need to do, but unfortunately the message is not down there in the community. Why? Unfortunately. Well, um, I think that it's, it's um, a matter of um, the education not having gone By who? out. Well, um, the ministry, the Ghana Health Service would have to, the public health um, the section would have to um, be, may be on the uh, on the forefront of making sure that when we get into this season, the announcements are going up for people to be careful. For example, you know that in the north, usually in the dry season, we get outbreaks of terrible spinal meningitis. And I think sometimes awareness is created that if you are traveling to this, this region, be careful about this and that and that. And I think in the same way, the last big episode we, have was, we had was in 2011 in which we had about 4,000 cases um, over the, the, the whole period. And here, two months down the line, we've already had about eight, almost 900 cases in Accra. So what we're saying is that probably um, we should make it um, a routine thing that every year, once the rains start coming, we educate people to be careful about um, their, their eating habits and uh, the, the, the way they dispose of pika matter and all that. That is not to say that it should only be done um, in the rainy season. But we should have a system where our sanitation be more up and the uh, authorities involved should be, should be more up to make sure that the city and the garbage you see around, all this uh, well well taken care of because mm. it's, it's part of the, of, the, of the problem. Because if you look at the, the epidemiology, where people are coming from, um, with these, the greatest numbers are coming from places where we all know that um, the hygienic the conditions over there are not the best. Mm. Uh, you have about seven to ten minutes to spend with us? Yeah. Okay, so so I'll get some reaction from Nana. Um, you, you've been listening to and you have made commentary on it, and he's, he seems also to be supporting. Uh, yeah, I appreciate, but uh, you see, uh, prevention is better than cure. This thing is becoming a ritual. Every year it happens. We know what are the causes. We know what to do to prevent it. The question is, why are we not stopping it? We will educate, we will do everything, but prevention is better than cure. So I think that the Ghana Health Service, and especially the, ministry, the, the local government, you see, the work of the local government is, is, will prevent these things from happening. Why should people throw human waste anywhere? Why shouldn't we manage human waste uh, so that it will not enter into water and food? 
Okay. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Bote, how crucial is it that perhaps uh, we resuscitate or resurrect um, the whole issue of having health inspectors in the health directorate or the environmental um, directorate of various municipal as well as uh, district assemblies? And how would that help your work as well? I think it's very crucial, Roland, very, very crucial. I mean, we have most of the houses in, the, in Accra, a lot of the houses in some parts of Accra, there are no toilets in the houses. People are converting toilets to rent, room to rent, and which is very, very bad. Now, if somebody should, you, you, can't, you can't do anything. When you, when you have to defecate, you have to defecate. The edge is so much that a person will defecate anywhere. So the local government authorities and um, the as they saying, should, it, it should be insisted that every house should at least have a toilet. Because people just get up in the morning, they do it in their rooms, they put it in black toileting bags, and they walk around, they just get anywhere. Because it's dark, you just use them, and you just leave it anywhere. Now the rains come and water will enter any bag, even if it's black, the water will enter it and then wash it away. So we, back in the day when we were kids, we used to have sanitary inspectors, we used to have a name for that, I've forgotten, but um, San Kasi or something. Sama San Sama. Kasi, yeah, Sama Sama used to come around and inspect houses. These things are not there. We need to insist that these things be done. Um, every household summer. should at least have a toilet where um, a proper disposal is made. And then even if it has to be the type that maybe somebody has to come and carry away, you still have nice oil carriers. But at least that thing is not there anymore. But we can still have um, a very nice way where every house can have a very nice disposal, a uh, waste disposal system in terms of fecal matter. It should be insisted. It's mm. crucial. Mm. Uh, then you say that perhaps uh, as, far as, as, as far as the planning is concerned, we seem to be failing somewhat uh, at, the, at the top. Because you are always at the, at the hospitals and the health facilities, so you always get to treat the cases. You don't necessarily tend to implement policy, etc. Um, no. wh wh where should we be getting the, getting the advocacy to? Not necessarily perhaps criticizing, but also just advocating. Yes, like 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 I, like we are talking today about the um, Ministry of Local Government, Ministry of uh, Health, Ministry of Interior, whatever. Here there is something about Ebola. Uh, going to have a, a team, a team has been constituted, and you realize that it's not only just uh, general health as a ministry. Almost like health. an interministerial team. Exactly, sort of. exactly. So this approach should should be the same, because the epidemic in this time, as I said, is no respect of social class. The bankers are coming to the hospital with cholera. I've, I've gotten two lecturers have come with cholera, and and old, very old people in their 80s coming with cholera. So the thing is that we should be more proactive in preventing future epidemics as such. And I think it is the simple right things that have to be insisted. A lot of time we take things for granted. And then, um, you know, when the episodes come, then we are rushing all over the place. But I think policies should be made and firmly made that um, houses should have toilets. Mm. If, if, if a house doesn't have it, mm. um, punitive measures should be put in, into place. And it, it should be insisted. Mm. And then a yeah, garbage disposal. Um, we see it all, the, all over the place. You drive through Accra and it's an eyesore. I mean, it's, and if you've traveled out and you come back and you see what we have in the city, it's, it's nothing to write <laughs> home about. I get your point. I, sometimes it's yeah. a, 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 no, no. The, I, I agree with him, but you see, there are also land management. You see, Ghana, we are not managing land. We are not planning our cities well. You see, if you don't plan your city well, and everywhere that water is passing, you build on it, you block waterway, then it means you are spreading diseases. So, you see, if Ghana, the, lands, the Ministry of Lands and Forestry, and for that matter, the Lands Commission and Town Planning, you know, they should manage our land well. Okay, so, so, so you do agree, that. it's almost like a multi stakeholder yeah, activity. It's a ministerial thing, but uh, they, each, each one should be doing his work. And then we can come together because if there's a, a disposable site and not close to where people are living, it may not affect them. But you see some houses so close, that means the land was not managed well. The local government allowed somebody to put up a house there, then this problem is springing up everywhere. And at the schools also, the teachers, you know, they are the ambassadors, they are close to the children. The Ministry of Education should also 
through the teachers, give them some support, then they educate them. If we don't do that, if, if it doesn't become a multi sectoral approach mm. and a ministerial approach, then we'll have the challenge. Everybody should do his part and play his role, and even the chiefs. Okay, um, Dr. Bote, we have to let you go. So lastly, what are you doing about the current cases that you're having now? What are you doing? Well, we are actively managing them, and I will say that at our facility, we haven't recorded any deaths yet, because when they come, we rigorously hydrate and hydrate and hydrate mm. them. We review them very, very frequently to make sure that they are getting enough fluid to replace. And I would say that within uh, a space of three to four days, um, a lot of them are good to go home. So we are doing our very best, and I must say that just that sometimes the rate of inflows of the patients are more than the number of cholera beds we have, but still, we are able to manage them, and um, uh, we haven't sent anybody away so far. We still manage them very, very well. Okay, and, uh, we haven't had anything. Okay, that's not to say that the other health facilities that have recorded deaths perhaps are, are, are not doing well, right? Since you say that, okay. It depends on um, what say the person comes in. As I said, somebody stay home and maybe stay a bit too long, and mm. maybe you said they can't be too late. Okay. But uh, once they, uh, you start rehydrating them, they usually improve. But if it comes too late, it's too late. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Dennis Botte. Um, and we know that you're going to get a lot of calls today from the media, especially in Accra, on this very subject. You are with the Ridge Hospital here in Accra. Now, your final comments as we wrap up on this very subject. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, as Ghanaians, we should know that prevention is better than cure. And as Ghanaians, we should not be our own enemies. Don't forget that whatever you do, it will come back at you. Be your brother's keeper. Don't throw waste anywhere. And those people who have been appointed, who have been paid to, to, to make sure that this thing shouldn't happen, please stop what you are doing. You sit in the office the whole day. You don't go to any place. How do you manage the environment? You cannot manage the environment only in the office. So most of you, what, you, what is the Ministry of Environment doing? Uh, what are they doing in this matter? It, uh, all of these things boils up to environmental issues. So we want them to, to lift the bar. They should, they should raise the standard. They should continue to improve. It's a continuous improvement thing. You cannot do it overnight. But we are not seeing the continuous improvement. We are seeing retrogressing. We are going down. Ghana used to be better in terms of sanitation, but we are going. In the rural area, it's only about 11% have proper sanitation. It's so bad. In the cities, we only have about 13 point something. So it's so bad in the country that we all have to put our hands on deck. We will do our part. You are doing your best. And I thank the press, too, that you are also taking this matter up. It's not always we should talk about politics. Politics is the madness of the majority for the benefit of few. But the environment is the benefit for everybody. So we should talk about <laughs> what benefits everybody than the madness of the majority for the benefit of the few. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we've had in the studio Nana Jomosapon, Executive Director, Friends of Rivers and Water Bodies. He's also an educationist with the Radford University College in Accra. Oh. President, the oh. chairman. Okay, you're the chairman of the uh, Radford University College here in Accra. We say thank you very much as, as well. And um, uh, thanks also for your contributions to uh, Facebook page as well as our Twitter handle. And, uh, of course, it is Join News on TV. We're taking a break.